what is going on guys welcome back to another episode of talking halos i'm your host today jared tims and i'm joined alongside my co-host my partner in crime nate green nate i'm not gonna say the line yet i'm gonna hold, <laughs> hold on hold on yeah because i got yelled at by a lot of fans because i did not let you finish your rant we have oh, a dog preview i think we'll finish it later as we get into this that's go fine. ahead and yeah that's fine that's fine so angels lose two of three in texas but guess what? Guess what? 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 Guess what? <laughs> what? We we won a game. Won one yesterday. Yeah, and we win one tomorrow. We won That's tomorrow. Two. That's two. We won one, one, one the next, next day. day. It's three in a row. It it's is a winning three. streak. It but, has, but it hasn't happened. Before. It has, it has happened. happened before. A winning streak has happened before. And not for the and not the way the Angels have been playing lately. <laughs> yeah. So the, uh, the Angels lose two of three in Texas. Um, hate to say it, but not all that surprised there. The Angels struggled against good teams this year. They faced some good pitching. Max Scherzer looked unbelievable. Jordan Montgomery looked better than I thought he would. Um, I thought the Angels might have you know a little better uh, better chance there. Um, and then uh, Even John Gray shoved. <laughs> John Gray shoved for sure, but Reed Detmers, and we'll talk about this here. It's a little bit better. Minute, was just a little bit better for sure. So, um. Yeah, take two or three. I think I believe now they're five, fourteen, and a split against teams over five hundred. Tough. It's not a not a way to win. Not a way to win. However, well, that's not a way to make the playoffs. But well, no. Well, yeah, it's not a way to make the playoffs. Not we're not a way to win. Same thing. One good thing. One good note. And then Nate, this is characteristics of a decent team, not a good team, a decent team, is that you're beating bad teams. Because that was something that the Angels, something that the Angels had struggled with for a while. I remember dating back to the bad Houston Astros years. It was oh, like, when the Astros just came to the West, we ugh. couldn't beat the Astros if our lives depended on it. No, and the Astros bad. were trying to lose. Like yeah, they, they were bad. trying to get Carlos Correa. Like they were tanking for Bregman. <laughs> like it was, and then we couldn't beat the Astros. So yeah, yeah that, that is nice. that is one good note. But I mean. You, you got to beat the good teams. Like, sure. who cares if you're meeting bad teams? Like, you, you got to win. The law of averages happens where you've got to win games because nobody's going to lose 162 games. So, yeah, you, you got to beat the good teams. And you, you have to beat them more than, you know, five times in a year. Yeah. Yeah, and you still got good teams ahead of you here. You know, you still got a lot of a lot of good teams ahead of you. I know Tampa Bay is in a rough spot, um, especially in the media. We're not going to talk about that. But in a no rough starting spot, pitching either. They're they're in a, a they're weird in a, spot. They are in a in a weird spot for sure. Um, still still a team over five hundred. Still a very good team. Um, sure. So I, the team that you need to be uh, definitely need to be afraid of. And Cincinnati also comes to town. Um, another team that isn't playing as well as they were early in the season, but still a very good, very dangerous, yes, pesky, pesky team. For sure, um, on that side of stuff. So the homestand does not definitely doesn't get any easier. Um, it's easier than what it looked like, say a month ago. Uh, but even two weeks ago, even two weeks ago, yeah. But still, still playing good teams. You got to be able to beat good teams, especially at home here. So let's get on. Let's let's you know start with the series though. Like I said, two of three in Texas. Scherzer's shoved. Montgomery looked better than I expected him to look. Um, Angels offense. Just was not there, has not been there all road trip. Let's see what they score. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen runs all road trip. Not a not in a good six thing to games. Do. That's yeah, it's not good. Yeah, not a good thing to do, especially when you're going uh, going into Texas, and especially when those two teams in Texas are uh the two best teams in the AL West right now. So um I don't want to break down the first two games. I thought, you know, it was just bad baseball, like like we've seen in the past, just you know, a bad team. Not what do you want to talk about, Max? Game. Like, it, he was so fun, it's man. So, I, we said this so, on the last, it is so fun to watch. It, on the last like, podcast. it is so fun to watch really that is. guy pitch. And yeah. <laughs> did you but, see how pissed off he was when he got to strike out a guy on the pitch clock violation? He was like, <laughs> I want to strike out the side myself. I didn't need no stupid pitch clock. Yeah. That was awesome. Like, nah, that, yeah. that's that's the edge and in, in the pitching rotation that you're missing. Like, we still don't have that. Uh, we have a bunch of crybabies, but we don't have that that guy. We do, we do. It's fine. Um, we we don't have that guy who's like, just give me the freaking ball. I don't care what happens behind me. I don't care about anything else. I'm gonna get my job done. And that's the way Scherzer goes about his business. Verlander. You look at some of the, 
not all elite pitchers are that way, but you look at some of the the Kershaw. some elite pitchers are that way, huh? Kershaw. Yeah, Kershaw's that Kershaw way. Goes yeah. out there and yeah, just says, of course. I don't care. Um, yeah, no, it's it's a it's a mentality, it's a mindset for sure on that side of stuff. However, game three is what I want to talk about. Reed Detmers looked phenomenal, took a no hitter into the eighth inning um, against one of the better offenses in baseball for sure. Yep. Um, definitely a bright spot there. Definitely something I want to highlight. Uh, one thing that I do want to hi- highlight and bring up, I I don't know. There was a lot of a lot of talk coming into this into this start for Reed Detmers first off by us saying this might actually be his last start at the major league level. If he doesn't, doesn't figure yeah. it out to some degree, like you, you might've thought about sending him down to AAA just, you know, to take a little pressure off to, you know, just go pitch, go, go do your thing. Um, and he went, he went and showed. And that would have only been two weeks by the way, because in two weeks you, you get to call up two guys. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you, it, it, it was one of those things where it was like, wow, like you might want to start thinking about sending him down. It's been a bit of a roller coaster for him this year, but um, absolutely shoved. Looks fantastic. Didn't go out there. It didn't feel like and, and tried to strike everybody out, you know, was more of a, you know, pitch to contact. Like when he threw his no hitter and, and I got screamed out again on Twitter for this, I said, you know, and arguably his best start of a uh, start of his career. You know, I didn't think like his no hitter was fantastic. It's a no hitter and everything. Didn't strike a lot of guys out. Didn't strike a lot of guys out this, this start either. Um, more than the no hitter, I believe. I think the no hitter just he only had a couple. But it's six, and he had five in this oh, start. Regardless, re- regardless, no seven and a third no hit innings. Fa- absolutely fantastic. Um, the velo is down. The velo is down. That's something mm-hmm. I want to talk about. Um, when the Angels drafted him, when when the Angels drafted him, they tried to get him to start throwing a little bit harder. Um, he shut that down, and this was all. This was in Long Beach at Long Beach State when it was the COVID year, and he shut that down. And said. I think that I'm a better pitcher when I can command stuff a little bit better. Um, and I think that's something that we've seen a lot, of, um, a lot of from these angels pitchers this year is like, I want you to throw things hard, right? Like throw the hard slider. We talked to Lance about it um, uh, at the beginning of the season, about Reed Detmers, about um, Patrick Sandoval, about Bill ha- Hazel in particular, um, who was a fantastic pitching coach in, in his own, in his own rights. But at some point you have to find the middleman of do I go and throw my best stuff or do I go and I, you know, pitch to contact and figure out a way to get, to, to get guys out. And I think the best example of this is Shohei Otani. I thought Shohei Otani, like during the 2021 season really started like turning into a pitcher itself. You know, it's kind of gone away now. It's more of a strikeout mentality. I mean, but he's got the stuff to do it. He absolutely has the stuff to do it. Um, but you started seeing the molding, started seeing a little bit more of the pitch to contact, like, hey, I, I, I can conserve myself. I can I don't have to go out there and do it all do it all myself. And and I think a lot of times, you know, we we lose the side of that. You know, the Greg Maddox type of pitcher, that that crafty lefty. Um, everybody wants to go out there and throw hard and it doesn't matter where where the ball goes, you know, it's it it, it gets guys out, yes, but I'd rather see a guy be consistent, throw strikes, keep the ball down in the zone, you know, work with movement. And I, and I think Detmers is a perfect example of that. Like I think Reed Detmers is a better pitcher sitting 92 to 94 rather than 94 to 98, you know, touching 97, whatever, whatever that max velo is that we saw early in the season, working down in the zone, working in and out, throwing that, throwing that curveball for a strike. And then those two secondary pitches that we've always said is the key to his success is the good slider. You can still throw that slider hard if you want to. You can turn it into a sweeper. You can turn it into a sweeper a little bit if you want to. Um, and then you can you can throw that change up a little bit more too. I think the change up works well. So um it's different for everybody. Like I think Patrick Sand, I think Patrick Sandoval needs to go out there and throw hard. Like I think that's how he that's how he is. I think if he kind of took a step back, he wouldn't be that same guy. And also his change up works a lot better off of that arm action that he has, like that max effort type of thing. And then the slider works better. So everybody is a hundred percent a little bit different. Um, but I think Reed Detmers is is a little bit better pitcher when he when he takes a step back and really pitches the contact. And I don't necessarily think that just because he doesn't throw as hard, uh, that his stuff is worse. Like, honestly, I think his stuff is better when he doesn't throw as hard. I think it allows him to, to have a little bit more control on stuff. I think it usually gives him, um, a little bit, a little bit, uh, more of a, a decrease in velocity, which I think that's one of, 
you and I, we talk about this all the time. What's our biggest knock about Griffin Canning? He only throws one pitch. Like that's been the biggest knock for three, how three long? Fast, three Canning? fastballs and a slider. He throws three fastballs. It's a it's a fastball. It's a fastball and a fastball. Like all of his pitches are hard. They're all within you know four miles an hour of the fastball, and that's not enough. Uh, of a change and, and you look at it and like even when Reed is throwing hard like he's 94 96 touches 98 you know and that slider is 91 92 like I, I was at a game where you're throwing 92 mile an hour sliders and a 96 mile an hour fastball and it's like which is fantastic okay. I, I love yeah, it I think that's it's really fantastic cool. but mm-hmm. but like that doesn't work for him right it, it it doesn't work for him because everything is way too close together uh, if a guy guesses fastball and it's wrong, he could still hit the slider because the fastball velo is it's so close to the slider. Like, like yeah, it, there's gonna be a little bit more movement, but I mean you're as long as you're a professional hitter, you're trying to keep your barrel in the in the zone for as long as you possibly can. If you guess wrong and the velo is only two miles an hour difference or four miles an hour difference, your your bat's still gonna be in the zone a long time and still gonna be able to make uh, make contact with that stuff, unless obviously it's out of the zone. But we know that Reed's not really that guy. Reed's a guy who likes to throw strikes and and mix his pitches up. So I love it. I love seeing Reed throw like this. Um, and, and he threw really well. Uh, like you mentioned with Sandoval, Sandoval's a different guy. Like everyone is different. And that's what makes coaching so hard is you have these guys who are like, hey, let's make everyone the same. And it's like, the cookie, the cookie there's cutter. only, there, there's not, you know, a hundred Shohei, Shohei Otani's walking around. You can't just teach everyone to throw 101 with a sweeper and the splitter. Like, yeah, there's a couple guys that can make that work, but not everyone, you know, like if we try to make that work for Reed Detmers, Reed Detmers would not be in the big leagues right now. Um, because that's just not who he is. Like Patrick Sandoval, same thing. Like he wouldn't be in the big leagues because that's just not who he is. He, he's not that type of guy. So Chase Silseth is that type of guy. He has... He has the same type of stuff where it's like, hey, throw the ball really, really hard, throw the splitter off of it, and then throw the slider sweeper in between because I don't think he throws like the true sweeper, but it's like, hey, it's a in between a sweeper and a slider. I know that's a, a cop slur. out. It's, it's a slur. Yeah, it's it's more like, really? slurvy than yeah, yeah it, it's it's a little harder than what Otani throws, but it's not straight slider movement. So yeah, I think that's a big thing. And I, by the way, I looked it up. Reed had two punches in his uh, no-no, one did walk. Okay. I think yeah. I so, yeah, no. So he he did have more strikeouts in this game um, against a, a really, really, really good team. This is one of the best offenses in baseball. Um, you could argue it's the second best offense in baseball, the best offense in the American League. Um, and they're healthy. I know, I know John Himes not hitting left-handed pitchers right now, but Mitch Garver rakes against lefties. And the fact that you're – he kind of pitched around him. It was kind of like the one guy that was like, all right, he's not going to beat us, but you know, we'll, we'll go get, we'll go out and get Simeon and Seager and, and all these guys. Simeon was the one who, who broke it up, but like, yeah, he threw the ball. Well, I, I really liked what he did and um, good way to go home. I know it, it's, it's a weird one, I think, because you lose the series, obviously you're pissed off, but like going home almost on like a little bit of a high note because of the way that Reed threw the ball and you got the dub against a really, really good team. So I, I thought it was interesting um, to just see how Reed threw the ball. And you, I think you guys know, I'm a big Reed Detmers guy. I'm a big Chase Silseth guy, not as big on the, uh, the Tyler Anderson, Patrick Sandoval and, and Jose Suarez, but like, you know, that's just who I am. I, I'm a big Chase Silseth guy and Reed Detmers guy. I, I like to see them succeed. And yeah, it was to a point where I was like, Reed's going to have to go down if he can't figure this thing out. And I'm glad that he was able to put together a good outing and, and get ready to go. Hopefully he can keep this going the rest of the year, because this is almost what we saw last year where like going into the no hitter, it was like, eh, he's okay. And then all of a sudden he throws a no hitter. And then all of a sudden it was seven zeros, Life seven zeros, yeah. six and one, six and one. You're like, Oh, okay. Like this guy could be a dude for us. Mm-hmm. And it's like, he's probably not that dude where it's seven shutty every time out. But he's also not what we've seen the last couple outings where he's been, you know, 12 innings, uh, 13 runs or whatever it's been. So it might even be worse than that. 15 innings, 16 runs, something like that. But yeah, I, I'm encouraged. I, I like what Reed did today. And I think that it's not, it wasn't on purpose. It wasn't an accident that he was throwing with less velo. I think that is intent. And that is something that he, he was trying to do. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. And, and, and like, 
Detmers had gotten a lot of slack on on social media and and everything in the past you know couple of weeks like asking to send down even I mean we even said it 23 years old still learning how to pitch at the major league level the fact that he almost says I don't know if I actually would have to look this up youngest player to have two no hitters it probably would have been him to be honest like I don't think too many guys throw two no hitters before 23 I can't like I, I would assume Nolan Ryan probably didn't do it I would assume I'm trying to think of anybody else who's had I'm guessing the bird threw one really early. Yeah. I don't know if he had two though. Like, my thing. Yeah, no, I, I don't know who would have been the, but I, I'm going to guess the, I think the bird threw one at like 2021. 20, yeah. uh, Fernando probably threw one early. I'm going to check that just to see what the youngest it's, guy is. I, I would have, I wouldn't know. I, it's been something that's sitting in the back of my head, just like, because uh, he almost just threw another one. But yeah, I remember 23 years old, um, there's a lot of upside there. I've always said very similar to a, a Clayton Kershaw, Barry Zito type guy. I'm pretty sure Barry Zito won a, won a Cy Young or two uh, in Oakland was one of the better pitchers in baseball, you know, soft toss and lefty with a big curveball. So um, a lot, a lot to look forward to there. And, and we, we talk about this off the record all the time when it comes down to the draft, before we get on to your, your rant here, because it's actually a really good, good segue. Um, not necessarily draft wise, but, that was the right pick in the draft. Like you can go, you go yeah. through drafts in the past um, for the angels in particular. It's like, Oh, you should have picked this guy. Should have picked this guy. Um, in my oof, what, seven years of covering the draft, this was the right pick. There, there was no other picks that the angels should have made besides Reed Detmer. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, it, it, it was a fantastic pick and I'm excited to see what he continues to do. So um, with that being said, you mentioned the coaching aspect side of stuff. Mm-hmm. I'll let you finish your rant here because we brought, and and you can talk about what we were talking about last time if you'd like to. Um, if you need to get like game face on or something like that, do I need to say like Jose Suarez is a good pitcher to push you off or something like that? I don't know what oh, I need to do. Now we can go. Like, this this team this team has been you know this team would be above five hundred. Um, this team would be a playoff team if they weren't Stop injured. It. If they Stop weren't injured, it. they'd be. So I'm just want to get you prepped here. Uh, <laughs> we mentioned it here, you know, a couple minutes ago, the coaching aspect of it, and you know the fact that not the cookie cutter type of pitcher doesn't work for everybody. I learned this my first year of coaching in college. Like I tried to make everybody into this, like it's fastball up in the zone. We're dropping a curveball in there and it just didn't work for everybody. Right. Like everybody's a little bit different. Um, and I think that's something that the angels have in a sense with struggled with. You can't make that cookie cutter pitcher, um, you know, and it's, it's not a bad thing to throw your best stuff, but that doesn't work for everybody. You got to figure out what works for everybody. So Nate, I'll let you go ahead, go on your rant. Cause everybody wanted to listen to you on the coaching side of stuff. Yeah. Go ahead and, and throw it out there. But before, well, before, before I let you do that, I need to get in your head. The angels would be a playoff team <laughs> if they didn't have this many injuries. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I actually think it's a really good time to go off on, on this rant too. I think we saved it for a good time because yeah. you see, you see Phil Nevin in the dugout on uh, what was that Monday? I, don't know getting, it was. It was cool I, I think it was i think it was monday when we we're getting freaking absolutely murdered by max scherzer yeah. it could have been tuesday I, I all these games are that was in houston going, actually no no it was in texas for in sure texas. yeah i think it was monday when max scherzer was absolutely dominating us and um you see phil nevin losing his mind and it's like phil too little too late like this, this team's out of it like it it is um you're, you're kind of trying to save your job is what it looks like. It's like, ah, oh, let me show some emotions, show some energy and be like, Hey, let's go, let's pick it up. And um, you know, it, it, it's not there. This coaching staff um, was not set up correctly. I don't think um, it was not set. It was not set up to succeed. I think there are a couple things that are really big in coaching staffs that the angels don't have the first one. And the most important thing is you have to have trust in each other. If you don't have trust in each other, you can't coach. You can't coach together. Um, and, and I don't think Phil Nevin, like, yeah, he might say that he he is friends with some of the guys on staff, but he didn't bring any of these guys in. This is a staff that's carried over from Joe. Joe has a lot of his guys in here. Yeah. And that, and that was the other thing about uh, Joe's tenure is the last year it was, oh, hey, let's throw in Phil Nevin, who Joe didn't necessarily know. And if you look at who Joe typically hires, it's guys he has been with before or he's coached before. Those are the two, or yeah, those are the two big things when you look at who Joe hires. It's guys he has coached with before or he has played, uh, who has played for him. And Phil Nevin wasn't one of those guys. So that was an interesting one. And then you bring Ray Montgomery in. Ray Montgomery never coached before. That was a huge red flag for me, knowing this is like, you're not a coach. Like, you need, especially when you have a, a coaching staff that 
we we don't have the coaching staff that the San Francisco Giants have. If you go and look at the San Francisco Giants coaching staff, I think it's 25 deep. Like it, it is ridiculous on how many. It might have been last year that they were 25 deep, but but they have so many coaches that it's like you what do they even do? But so Montgomery doesn't really help because he doesn't I, I don't know what he does except for um let everyone know what Perry says to do, and then they're supposed to do what Ray says. So that's that's one strike one for me. Uh the other thing that I want to talk about, Benji Gill. So, yes. Uh, Giants, sorry. Um, oh. Manager, bullpen, catching coach, pitching coach, Andrew Bailey, by the way, former yep. Angels. Good, uh, good one. Brian Bannister, director of pitching, Kai Correa, bench coach and in- infielding coach, assistant hitting coach. I'm not going to name everybody here. Director of hitting, assistant hitting coach, assistant pitching coach, quality assurance coach, first base coach, hitting coach, third base coach, uh, major league assistant coach. Um uh, major league assistant coach, bullpen catcher, director of video coaching, assistant coach. I don't know if that's a lot. I'm going to, I'll dig in a little bit more for you and see how many the angels have right now, but um, yeah, go ahead. Continue. Um, Yeah. So I was going on the, uh, the Benji Gill rent right here. Angels have a little bit less than that, but they have some staff interpreters and, and things like that. That'll make it a little bit bigger. Um. Benji Gill was not set up for success this year. Um, everyone wants to blame Benji Gill a little bit for the way our defense has played. It is not Benji Gill's fault. We were not set up to succeed with the infield we were we were going to run out there. We didn't have a starting shortstop going into the year. Everyone can point to Zach Neto and be like, hey, he's been amazing. He has. But going into the year, you didn't know if Zach Neto was going to be a major leaguer. And you didn't know when he was going to be a major leaguer. So you didn't have a shortstop, which is the most important position on the field. You were asking guys to play out of position. Brandon Jury is not a second baseman. Luis Rangifo, sure, you can call him a second baseman, but like really isn't a good second baseman. Um, Gio Urshela is not a shortstop. He He's not really even a second baseman, not really even a first baseman. He is a third baseman. Like that's what he's supposed to play. He is very good at playing third base. So I think Benji Gill was not set up for success with the group that he was given and said, hey, make this team a good defensive team in a year where I think defense and athleticism is supposed to be the most important thing with this team. With any team you look at, it's all about being very good athletically and uh, very good on the defensive side of things. You look at what Texas has. Texas is super young and athletic, right? They've got two shortstops up the middle. They've got a young third baseman who has been outstanding. And then you've got a really good athletic first baseman. Perfect, right? Like those, that's what you're kind of looking for right now because the shift is gone. So they're not, they're, they can't quite be in the spots that guys want them to be, but they can be close. And you're, you're, trying to put the ball in play more. You you saw all these rules trying to trying to limit things for pitchers. They want guys to put the ball in play more. Tyler Anderson's one of those guys. The Angels go out and sign Tyler Anderson. He strikes out guys at like a, a, a 7% clip. So why are we going to make the worst Angels defense we've ever seen with a guy who puts the ball in play at an 85% clip? Half the time, it's a, it's a ball in play. More than half the time, excuse me. So I, I'm not going to kill Benji Gill. I'm not going to even kill Phil Nevin because I really don't think Phil Nevin should be in this position. I think that um, this is a power play from Perry. Perry really wants Phil in here because he knows him and trusts him and knows that he really wants a manager job. And this was his way of getting it was, hey, we're going to put you in here, but you better listen to everything I say, because if you don't, I'm going to find somebody else who will. Almost like the Jerry DePoto thing where he put Scott Service in charge and it was like, should Scott really be in this role? No, but you know Scott's going to listen to everything Jerry says because they're friends and, you know, that's the way things work. Every, and here's the one that I'm really going to piss some people off with. Matt Wise. Matt Wise has been here for three years, okay? The Angels pitched it pretty well last year um, with what they had. The starting pitching was pretty good. Michael... Lorenzen was good. Patrick Sandoval had a breakout year. Reed Detmers threw the ball well. Yes, he had to go to AAA to kind of figure things out, but you, you can't really teach too much on the fly in a major league setting, right? Major league settings are meant to win baseball games. They're competitive, and it's not a time for development. 
unless you're a team like the Oakland A's where it's like, yes, we're trying, but we're not really trying, you know, like that's a time for development. When you're a team that claims to be a playoff team, like the angels do every single year and never are, you can't be developing guys all on the fly and being like, Hey, you know what? You're real close to being a major leaguer. How about we call you up and kind of try and show you how to, how to, throw the slider a little bit better, how to hold runners a little bit better. No, no, you can't do that. This is a time to win baseball games. So yes, he had to go down to AAA. I think, I don't think he was quite ready. I think uh, they should have sent him to AAA just so he could learn what it's like to fail because that is a thing. I think it's a big thing for all players that sometimes they don't fail. And when they actually do fail, how do they, how did they get their mindset right to be like, yes, I failed. I'm going to learn from that and I'm going to get better and I'm going to go out there and succeed because I know how to uh, react when things don't go my way. And I think Patrick Sandoval hasn't quite learned that either. When things don't go his way, still acts a little immature at times. Okay. Matt Wise has done an amazing job. I am not a big Matt Wise guy, but he has done a good job with the talent he has been given. This year in the bullpen, Ryan Tapera, Aaron Loop, they're veterans. Nothing that Matt Wise can do. Matt Wise is not telling Phil Nevitt, hey, it's time to put Aaron Loop in in the ninth inning or the bottom of the eighth against Oakland. Like, that's not his job. His job is to make sure all of his guys are prepared to pitch in baseball games. That's his job. It's to communicate with the pitchers to be like, hey, you're probably hot today. You are most likely throwing in this area. And then his job is to call down to the bullpen, make sure that they get ready, and then when they are ready, let Phil know, hey, the guy you want to go in the game or actually the guy that Perry wants to go in the game is ready to go so you can make that move. That's Matt Wise's job. Here's the guy that I want to place blame on, and I know we talked about this, and I don't even know if this is 100% fair, but there is one common denominator between what we've seen this year There's a couple things, actually. One, the shift is gone, so you're going to see a lot more offense, right? It's not 100% gone, but it's a little bit gone. So you're going to see a little bit more offense. We're seeing regression in pitching across the board, I think. most, Yeah, for most teams. teams, Not not every team, but most teams. And that's why I think you see such a giant – why why it was such a big deal for Houston and Texas to go get Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander because they knew that there was a little bit of regression in pitching, and they're like – I mean, a little bit of regression for Max Scherzer as his ERA goes from two to to like three one. Like, and when he's in a playoff environment, he's going to be great. Same thing with Justin Verlander. When you really get him in a playoff environment, he's going to be excellent. Bill Hazel is the common denominator for me, and I know that might not be fair to some people, but he's the common denominator. Who was here? Who was not here last year when Patrick Sandoval was having a breakout year? When Shohei Otani was a Cy Young finalist. He is not a Cy Young finalist this year. You can come at me all you want about that. He is not a Cy Young award winner. He's not. He's the MVP? Absolutely. It's not even close. But he should not be in the Cy Young conversation. He was 100% in the Cy Young conversation last year. Patrick Sandoval, breakout year. Reed Detmers figured it out last year. Um, Yes, there were some bumps in the roads with with Jose uh, Suarez and, and things like that. But you look at some of these guys and to see how much of a step backwards that Sandoval and Detmers have taken. And the reason why I am placing a little bit of blame here on on, uh, Hazel is because they look the same. All these pitchers look the same. They're all trying to throw the fastball super hard. They're all trying to throw the sweeper. It's like somebody came in the room and was like, Hey, I know how to fix your team. Start throwing sweepers more. Shohei Otani does it. He's one of the best pitchers in baseball. Last year when he did it, it was never hit. It was unbelievable. We're going to teach everyone how to throw that. They're all going to throw 97 plus, and they're going to be elite. But that's not how everyone works. Like, Demers isn't that guy. Sandoval isn't that guy. Um, Sandoval actually should throw the hard, hard slider almost more of a cutter-ish like he did for Team Mexico against Team USA. Throw the fastball in and away, and then run the slider in on guys. That's what he should do. And then throw the changeup off of that to really get guys off the plate um, and to get guys guessing and, and out in front and things like that. So that is where I'm at with the coaching staff. I don't, 
I'm not a Phil Nevin guy. I don't think he should be in this position. It is what it is. You know, he's doing, he's doing Perry's job for him. He's not, this isn't on Phil. Like I, I scream and yell all the time about Phil's bullpen management. It's not Phil. It's Perry's bullpen management. It's Ray Montgomery telling Phil, this is what Perry wants. This is what they have decided before the game. If this is the situation, this is who we're going to. Benji Gill, not the guy for me. Not really uh, the guy who should be taking any of the blame. We don't play defense. We, we're a, a very bad defensive team. And we were set up that way. We were set up that way. But Bill Hazel and Matt Wise, I think Matt Wise is getting way too much um, way too much of, of this when he really shouldn't be getting this much hate. I guess is the right word because Matt Wise has been here three years, the pitching and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. How many times did you see on Twitter this off season people and MLB people will say angels need pitching angels need pitching. And all you saw on Twitter off season was, do these guys not watch angels baseball? The angels, the angels pitching has been really good. We don't need pitching. We need a shortstop. We need this. We need that. Like they started to fill in the blanks. Maybe we need a shortstop. We need a, a, a closer like there were things that we needed but every angels fan was going out there saying we don't need starting pitching we are actually really good at starting pitching five, five deep <laughs> i guess you could count six but um yeah so when you look at what the angels have done they have turned guys into very similar pitchers and that's a problem for me. That's why, and and I think Bill has one of those things where he's like, "Hey, I really love the the sweeper. I really love the hard fastball." He's a driveline guy. Like those, that's driveline loves those kind of things. Pitch, pitch so, line, hard slider. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's where it is. Honestly, um, that was going to be a little bit of my rant about the the coaching staff. Yes, Phil needs to go. Yes, you need to get a whole new coaching staff in there. And here's my thing. Whoever comes in as the manager, and hopefully it's a whole new whole new organization when this happens, but whoever comes in as the manager, he needs to be able to pick his staff. If he doesn't want Ray, Ray Montgomery on the staff, Ray Montgomery should not be on the staff. Yeah. If he doesn't want Benji Gill as his infield coach, we should not force him to have Benji Gill as his infield coach. And then you could you could go down the list of Bill Hazelman being the third base coach and what a oh my gosh watching him manage third base has been awful but you know you go through it all but that's what I'm thinking when I'm looking at it and honestly everyone wants Aaron Boone gone I wouldn't mind seeing Aaron Boone as the next Angels manager Marcus Timms wouldn't that way that might be a guy who stays Angels are up in the offensive categories if you look at it all. All the offense categories are up, which make no sense, but they are. Oh. And um, pitching has yeah. been down across the board, so hitting is going to be yep. up a little bit for yep. that. Of course. So proud of you, Nate. Look at that, dude. I got you fired up and everything. I, thought, Angels, I, I thought it was pretty calm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't get you real fired up, unfortunately. We'll, we'll, we'll get you. We'll get you. Because it was, a, it was a fake fired up. I know you don't truly believe uh, Jose Suarez is good, and uh, <laughs> this team should be a playoff team. So. All right, guys. All right. Just want to thank you all so much for listening to this podcast and watching it. If you could go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're watching us on YouTube. If you are not watching us on YouTube, get on there, subscribe. Let us know how you feel about the podcast. Send us a DM wherever you know we can be found on social media, Twitter X, uh, Facebook, and Instagram. You can follow myself on Twitter X. I'm gonna keep calling it that. I know it's X, but it's fine. X, Twitter, whatever it's called. Um, Jared underscore Tim's Nate at Nate Green 34. Guys, thank you so much for listening and watching. Have a great rest of your day. Mm-hmm.